Heaven is not your eternal home, and that's good news. There are 1,189 chapters in the Bible, and only four of them depict the world as it should be, the first two and the last two. In both cases, what you have is humans partnering with God to rule over the creation, which he made and called good, tasked with co-creating the future with him to take it all someplace incredible. The Bible comes to us in the shape of a story, and in both the once upon a time part and the happily ever after part, humans inhabit the same space as God, which is like earth and heaven overlapping. None of our hymns talk about this. Few of our pastors preach it. I've spoken with thousands of serious Bible-believing Christians and only had two conversations with somebody who knew about this before we talked. Don't get me wrong, I love heaven. My dad is there right now. Uh, I'm thankful that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But the story of the Bible is not about how to go to heaven when you die. It's about God's kingdom, which is in heaven, coming to invade and overtake the earth and make all things new again through Christ. Have you ever started watching a movie 15 minutes in and missed who all the main characters are? Or have you ever left a movie at the sad part 15 minutes before the ending comes and makes it all right again? That's how most of us read our Bibles. We stay in the 1,185 chapters that are about God's plan to fix everything, and we never actually get to the point where we talk about what that looks like. So, I wrote a book. It's called The Overlap Life. It's about 270 pages, not very long. You could read it in a couple of afternoons with some coffee. I believe that if we really lived like we believed that this was true, it would honestly change everything. Your work should change. You're not just polishing brass on a sinking ship. God plans to restore this place and you can live and work in such a way that you're contributing to that goal, knowing that your work is something that God is proud of. Your rest should change. Sunday is not a day of rest. It should be a day of work for Christians. But if Sunday isn't restful, then what should our rest look like? The answers again are on the first two pages and the last two pages of your Bible. Your relationships should change with other believers and with your unsaved friends and family. Even your understanding of what the gospel is, why the church exists, and how you ground your identity into Christ will change as a result of understanding the story of the Bible from beginning to end. One pastor friend of mine has said, the story you live in is the story you live out. If you want to finally make sense of your Christian walk, one major paradigm shift will unlock more for you than thousands of hours of sermons, trying harder, praying more, and reading endless blog posts or devotionals. You need to see the whole story differently. You need to see the true story that God is telling. I've made it as affordable as I possibly can, and I believe that God has asked me to spread this message as far as I possibly can. So while my publisher told me that I should probably cha charge around $20 for this, I'm dropping it all the way to $7, and only in a digital format. And if you don't like it, or if you read it and you think I'm a crazy heretic, send me an email to that effect and I'll refund your money, even if your email is laced with profanity, all caps, exclamation marks, and weaponized Bible verses. You can only hope for what you actually desire, friends. And God's word promises a future so incredibly beautiful that desiring it is only the beginning. See you on the inside. Come further up, come further in. Heaven is not your eternal home, and that's good news.